Good morning, everybody. All right, he should be on in just a second. Hey, Kristen, thank you for this morning. That was awesome. Evie, did you mute everybody purposefully? It's, I've got the control. Oh, okay. Ashley, everyone should be able to actually unmute themselves. So. All right, awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Not yet what, Terry? Can't unmute. Oh, boy, a whole bunch of people just popped on. Hey, good morning. You're wearing my favorite color. This one? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. There we go. We can hear you, Terry. All right, Shane, welcome to our little Zoom. Oh, my gosh. Thank you very much for having me. It's so wonderful to see lots of very smiling faces, beautiful faces. You have a, um, a skeleton behind you. That's kind of creepy. I do. I can get it out of the way if it bothers No, it's, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Doctor's office, you see stuff like that. Um, so how is everybody? Everybody doing good? Good, good. Thumbs up. Great. The right side of your screen, you've got the little chat section. If you want to shoot some questions over there, that's great. Um, we'll all go ahead and hold questions until after, if that's okay. That way we can get through the material, get through some information because we have this very mysterious and weird thing going on where the world is going, what is happening and why? And this crazy thing called coronavirus, what is happening with that? So we're gonna go through and uh, Ashley had asked me to just do a quick presentation to give you some information because I feel information is key. When we have information, we can make good decisions we can keep our heads level and we can be grounded. So if we're in those states, our brain is going to think a little bit better and we don't fall back out of our frontal cortex into that mammalian brain that is kind of that fight or flight situation, which a lot of the world is in right now. As you guys have probably noticed, we don't know what to do, do we wear masks, do we wear gloves, how do we do it, why are we doing it? So we'll touch on all that today. We're gonna to have some fun in the, at the same time. You guys good? Hey. Excellent. I like the thumbs up in the screens because I can see all your beautiful faces at the same time. Okay, I see some familiar faces too. Oh my gosh, this is wonderful. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to start with a little screen share here. Can everybody see? Excellent. So I'm going to move this over here. If you see me turn my head, it's because I've got a couple of different screens going at the same time so I can access info. Okay, so with anything in life, we need to look at how do we protect against it, combat for it, and prepare for it. So with our immune system, that's something we're innately born with. And it's not been so prevalent in our society that we need to say, hey, why, why do we need to do this and, and what's going on? Because our immune systems are the most important thing that we're going to have because that keeps us healthy, keeps us strong, and keeps us, you know, to where we can get out and and list, sell homes, do what we need to do, and start rocking and rolling, okay? So my name, Dr. Shane Kokoska, I'm the uh, creator and founder of Health Restoration, HR Pain Management in Stem Cell Colorado. Uh, I've been in the uh, healthcare industry for over 20 years, having just so much fun, having the opportunity to teach and present and also heal and help people get better because the human body heals itself. Doctors just facilitate that, so don't, don't let them take that away from you. It's not us that does it, it's you that heals yourself. And I truly believe in that. So with the, the fundamental approaches as far as philosophy that I take with my patients, it's all about how to get you healthy and how to keep you there. So that's what we're gonna kind of touch on here today. And if 
my next slide. And there we go. So today we're going to go through and do a brief biological overview of our immune systems. Kind of what are the key players and briefly how do they work? I don't want this to be an immunology lecture. That would bore the daylights out of me. But it's more along the lines of what, if we know about how it works, then we know how we can help bolster it and boost it up to where we can get the most out of it, okay? Because if we can get the most out of it, you stay healthy. So uh, the other things we're gonna talk about, I'm gonna chat a little bit about coronavirus, uh, call, also called COVID-19. And then we're gonna talk about different things you can do at home, as well as if you choose to go out and get some of these treatments on your own, we can to get you set up to where we can do this and everything even more. Um, so the main parts of our immune system, the first part is our skin. It's called our integumentary system. So it's, it's kind of like that barrier around everything that keeps the outside world out and keeps our inside world in. There's, the skin is very good at protecting against viruses, against um, bacteria, different invading things from coming in because it is that barrier. And we want to keep that as strong and healthy as possible. Our thymus gland, located right up here in our neck, thyro uh, the thyroid also, uh, adrenal glands, bone marrow, white blood cells, antibodies. Uh, the complement system is a cascade of proteins that has to go through a series of steps to launch this attack against any invaders that come in. Our lymphatic system is kind of a pump outside of our body, outside of our circulatory system that takes all of that material from our, from our intracellular material and pumps it through this to get it back into our circulatory system and actually puts it more in contact with our immune system. So all these white blood cells and killer T cells, all these cool terms that you hear, the lymphatic system pumps it to where we can gain access to everything that's going on. Uh, our spleen is actually more uh, into our immune system than it is so far with uh, blood sugar regulation. A lot of people kind of think that. Um, bone marrow, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I have bone marrow in there twice. Um, and then stem cells, because bone marrow is where our stem cells and our immune system actually starts from. So by definition with our immune system, uh, it's an organization of cells that functions collectively together in a systematic fashion to get rid of foreign toxins and substances that are harmful to our body. So when we look at things that are invaders, we look at them and label them as an antigen that produces an immune response. Now, if it's something that is going to cause harm to the body, so an antigen is anything from pollen, dust, and mold. <clears throat> and we go through and we're gonna say, okay, our pathogens are our parasites, bacteria, viruses, or what would be, you know, what we're combating now is our coronavirus uh, virus 19. So that's, just some basic definitions that we're gonna need as we go through here. So here are our bad guys. So our parasites, these are little things that kind of float around, amoebas, different stuff that's in bad water. That's why we wanna cook things properly. Uh, we want our, our water stop. process, we love that kind of stuff. Right, grab the... um, our bacteria, we can get from you know pretty much any surface, very similar the, to that. Um... We got it muted. So how do viruses spread? So viruses are transmitted via water droplets that usually float through the air after someone coughs or sneezes. That's why we're wearing masks, right? Because masks protect us from spreading it out more than they do from it coming into us. So that's something that's a little myth with masks. So if we're wearing a bandana over our face, that's gonna protect a little bit because if you can blow a candle out through it, it's really not doing too much for you other than you could rob a train with it, I guess. Um, so, and it does keep you from touching your face. So that's the other thing. I do like this little picture here where the dogs put their cone on the guy's head instead of the cone on the dog's head. Keeps you from touching your face and your eyes. So when those little water droplets go through the air, we can breathe those in, they land on a surface, we can touch that surface. And then if we touch our eyes, nose, mouth, et cetera, any kind of mucosal membrane is different than our skin. Because our skin is thicker, things don't get through it but they do readily go through our eyes. If we breathe them in through the mucosal membranes in our nose, mouth, et cetera, they can, you know, they can go right through those pretty quickly and we can uh, get those transmitted to us. So the keys, wash your hands. Um, if you wear glasses, you're already a step ahead because if somebody sneezes at you, it doesn't go straight onto your eyeballs. Um, so what I recommend when people wash their hands is wash your hands just like you just caught up a bunch of hot peppers and you got to put your contact lenses in. You don't want all that spicy juice stuff going into your eyeballs because that burns pretty, uh, pretty intensely. 
So here's a nice little cross section of our uh, not so friendly coronavirus. These little purple guys on the outside, these little stems that stick out, we're gonna talk about those in a second because they're gonna come into play as far as why this is actually uh, a pandemic. And it has to do with all these little guys on the outside, okay? When we kind of slice this guy in half and we look at this coil on the inside, that's the virus's RNA. So RNA is, this, is the step necessary for replication, but you have to have DNA to do it on your own, which is also key. Now with the viruses, they do not have DNA, nor do they have the systematic ability inside the cell to self-replicate. So they need us, they need a host in order to multiply and divide and then continue to spread through the world. So this uh, Andrew uh, Pocosi, he, uh, he's a virologist over at John Hopkins, very, very smart guy, and he, I liked his analogy because viruses need to hijack our cells to do it. So they, he kind of analogizes to, it's like uh, someone breaks into your house, they use your furniture, they eat all your food, they play all your video games, and then they have 10,000 babies, and then they bust the walls down as they burst out, and then they go start robbing your neighbor's houses. That's very similar to how a virus works because it has to attach to our cells, inject its RNA inside, and then uses our body's ability to replicate RNA to then, divide, to then multiply itself, and then pops open our cell and goes on to our other cells. And that's how it spreads. So our basic immune response to an invading pathogen is, if it, once it enters our body, we do have good things that our body does on our behalf. So we try to recognize it, label it, and then we orchestrate a, a counteroffense against it. But in the process of fighting it off, we also make copies of it and store it inside of our lymph nodes so that we can then have a record of what we've come into contact with in the past and we build our immunity, okay? So building our immunity helps us when things come back, we can fight it much faster because we're already a step ahead. We say, ha, I recognize you, you're a bad guy, I'm gonna get you out of here really fast. So the experience that we have while we're fighting something is a good thing to have, but it's not a good thing to go through. This is what I'm talking about are the swollen glands, it hurts to swallow, the scratchy throat, the runny nose, the watery eyes, the fevers and the chills. That's our body getting rid of it. So when you're experiencing those, that's a good thing because your immune system's revved up, it's doing its job. Now this is the key part here. So this guy right here, Everybody's like, oh my gosh, you've got a fever. I've got to, I've got to stop this. No, our fevers are actually part of our immune system that is necessary to kill off this stuff because our bodies can handle 100, 101, 102, 103, 104. We can handle those temperatures. Viruses and bacteria can't. So when we elevate up to that 102, 103 level, we don't want to be there very long. However, we can handle it. They cannot, and we burn them off, so to speak. So when they say, let's just jump in and start regulating the temperature. Oh my gosh, it's 100, let's keep that down. Actually, you're actually kind of tying your one arm behind your back, so to speak, with your immune system. And you're kind of handicapping it a little bit. <clears throat> let it run its course, let it, let it do its thing. You're sick, you've got it, just let it do it. Just make sure that you maintain yourself in a healthy fashion while you're there, which is gonna be hydration, eat a little bit, keep your blood sugars balanced and rest. Don't keep trying to work, don't go out and see your neighbors, don't expose yourself and don't expose them. That's one of the keys. So let's look at this virus, this nasty, scary thing that we hear about on the news that has us all scared and locked in our houses. So it's labeled a pandemic only because it has the ability to be pathogenic. Its pathogenicity is high. Huge $10 word, job security for me. What that means is it spreads easily. That's all the pathogenicity means. So it can go from one person to the next without much trouble. And that's because of these little guys here. They're called spike protein furans. Don't worry about the terms. You don't have to memorize that. I promise there's not gonna be any test or anything like that. These are like little Velcro arms, okay? So the more Velcro arms, the better the Velcro, the stickier it is. So that's exactly what these are like because they have to, like we said before, they have to be able to latch on to our cells and hold tight so that they can inject their RNA inside to take over that cell and use our cell to replicate. If they can't attach, they can't spread. So that's where this one is pathogenic is because it attaches really easy. So to give you an idea how, uh, how, how sticky it is, so to speak, 
is it's a thousand times more clingy than the SARS virus because it has a thousand times more Velcro arms, if you will. So it can grab a hold of you pretty easily and then starts to do its thing. Now let's look at most people who do have some immune compromised situations. We can, in a few cases, have people go into what's called ARDS. ARDS is a medical term, acronym stands for Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome. So if we go deep, deep inside the lungs, we have these little guys over here. Our lungs go from our trachea to primary, secondary bronchi, like the branches on a tree, and they eventually get to the little leaves. Well, these are the leaf sections called alveolar sacs or alveoli. These are little sacs that they kind of fill with air and they can, they can expand and move a little bit and get some air exchange. But we have all these capillaries that, that wrap around them, these little blue and red guys. So that's where the gas exchange happens. Our blood system can soak up the oxygen and it expels off the CO2. And then that slowly diffuses in and out of the lungs so that we get that gas exchange. Here's where it turns into acute respiratory distress syndrome is down at this level of the lung. We start to get a lot of inflammation with, with COVID-19 around the lungs. This can start to plug and damage the alveoli sacs to where we can't have that gas exchange. Without the gas exchange, we get this bad medical term called hypoxia. Hypoxia means that we don't have enough oxygen uh, exchanged through the blood and then basically we just have a lot of carbon dioxide build up in our system and we are starting to really need that air to be able to keep moving on because you and I both know air is important to live. So where does this inflammation come from that goes down deep inside the lungs? It comes from this guy right here called NLRP3, which is an inflammasome. Don't worry about these terms. I promise there's not going to be a test. I'm just giving you some information. So the NLRP3 is an inflammasome that releases what's called, an inner, uh, what's called a cytokine. This guy right here, interleukin-1 beta. Is just a, these are, I'm getting really deep into it real quick, and we'll be right back out of this, I promise. So hang in here with me. Everybody doing good? Give some thumbs up. Awesome. So NLRP3 cascades over to a cytokine storm, which is created by interleukin-1 beta. That's how we start to spill over. That's that chemical cascade I mentioned earlier. That leads to swelling, inflammation. So if any of you have ever seen somebody who sprains a wrist or an ankle and it swells up like crazy, now imagine that amount of swelling down deep in those little teeny sacs uh, those alveolar sacs, and that swelling is going to not only plug them up, but it can actually damage them. And in the repair process, we build up some uh, scar tissue. That's where we're seeing the damage with COVID-19 the most. Now, here's the really cool part. Being a holistic doctor like I am, I'm going, okay, great. We wear masks, we isolate, we do that stuff. There is no vaccine, and I'd be kind of scared of it if it came out right away because there's not a lot of human trials with it. But here's what I look at is I'm going, what can we naturally do can, to build up our own system? Because I like to go to the gym, I like to exercise, I like to do things to build my body up, but also what can I be doing to build my immune system? Because it's not like I can do bicep curls and build my immune system up, it's more along the lines, we gotta do other things. So looking at this cascade that happens with NLRP3 and interleukin-1 beta and the cytokine storm, melatonin, Simple thing you can buy at pretty much any store, any grocery store or any health food store, has been shown to normalize the mitochondrial function, but watch this last part, it inhibits NLRP3 cytokine storm. They're seeing this, that uh, it stops this inflammation to where yes, you'll be sick, you'll have a fever, it'll be like a really bad cold flu, but we won't see the swelling and all of this pooling of fluid inside the lungs, which causes all that damage. So melatonin is something that can naturally help. Melatonin is also a very natural, uh, a very wonderful natural sleep aid. So it can help us sleep. So this statistic is actually out of date already because it doesn't matter how quickly I update this, it's changing and we're getting different numbers. But what you can notice is the trend that the, the younger we are, the less these people are suffering with COVID-19 and then the older we are, then unfortunately, um, we're, uh, we're seeing more death rates with the older population because the thing that matches with this as COVID-19 wraps up with age bracket, like the older uh, we are, then the more susceptible you are. We also see melatonin drop with those people. So the older generations of people don't have as much melatonin. They don't produce as much. So we're actually seeing that correlation as well. 
So recommendations by the medical experts, what are they putting out there? If you do have to lower your fever, use acetaminophen or Tylenol instead of Aleve or ibuprofen, okay? Because the NSAIDs, the non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, are actually, we're seeing a little bit of a boomerang effect, okay? So a boomerang effect means that we initially feel good, but then there's this, instead of this little wave of uh, inflammation, we see this big overcompensation of inflammation. And then it's almost like we were better off not taking it to begin with, because then we see more fluid in the lungs, more of the ARDS, that acute respiratory distress syndrome, that we, we have to go after and, uh, and battle. So with the, uh, with the fevers, they're, again, they're not a bad thing. We want to, you know, you can maintain 102, 103, that's good. Um, the other thing that I do like for the aches and pains and some little bit of fever reduction and inflammation is also some CBD oil. It's natural, it's good. Remember, uh, make sure it's, good for, it's from a good hemp plant. Don't get stuff with THC or you might see little green men cruising around or have a little too much fun. Um, we, want the, we want the CBD, the cannabinoids. Those guys are good for inflammation and pain control. There we go. Sorry. Um, so ways to strengthen our immune system, right? Because that's our true defense. That's our best defense. That's actually better than any doctor, to be honest with you. So we want a good nutrition, uh, a good nutritional diet. We want to take our supplements to where we build our body up. Okay. We want to get plenty of water, good, healthy exercise, too much exercise. And if it breaks the body down too much, can actually start to inhibit and lower our immune system because we then take resources to build everything back up. And so we also want to get plenty of sleep. So that melatonin kicks in to give us nice, nice restful sleep, but we also get eight, nine hours of sleep per night. So I know that's kind of uh, a high number for a lot of us when we're sitting there going, hey, I've got all the stuff to do. But yes, we want that higher number of those higher hours of sleep. Decreasing your stress level, doing some things for relaxation. And there are different treatments. So let's look at those. Let's take a peek here. So what is a, what's a good diet like? Uh, a vitamin rich, fruits and vegetables, plant-based diet is best with added nice, healthy protein sources. Organic, no hormones, chicken. Red meat's not bad, but too much red meat can be because it increases our body's ability to create inflammation. Wonderful for nutrients and protein, but too much can be a, a bad thing in that situation. Avoiding sugars, processed foods, um, processed flours, those types of things, white bread is not really the best for you. A whole wheat is good unless you're gluten intolerant or you get irritated from that because gluten can increase some inflammation. Because inflammation is one of the main things that we fight as healthcare providers with pretty much every disease on the planet. Whether it's anything from arthritis, to pain, to recovering from an injury, to your immune system and COVID-19. Inflammation is not good in the body. Any anti-inflammatory diet you can take is going to help you more than anything for a long term. I'm talking big picture here. So exercise, movement, strength training is great. It's fabulous because it stresses our bones, it builds our muscles, thickens everything, densifies ligamentous tissue. We also want to dance, have some fluid movement because that's not only good for the body, it's good for the brain. Yoga, a great mental process as well as improving flexibility. It does pump that lymphatic system we were talking about, all of these do. Um, it's also good for relaxation and calming down your stresses and gives you a moment to think and reflect on your life because you don't talk during yoga. You have to think and go inward, which is fantastic. Good cardio, get on a treadmill, uh, do some cycling, get out of the house, do some different things like that. Walking, just go and walk. No cell phone, no music, listen to the birds, watch stuff. So as you're walking, label things as you're walking. That's what a lot of uh, psychotherapists are saying now is, when you're walking, get out and get away from stuff. Don't sit there and email and get your stuff. Yeah, you're outside, and which is half the battle, but I want you to put that phone in your pocket or leave it at home. This is your time. So I want you, while you're walking, label things. That's a bird, that's a fence, that's a rock, that's a trail, that's a blade of grass. Just because this is gonna get your brain thinking about something other than work, something other than the stresses, some things other than 10 million other balls you've gotta juggle in the air to keep things going. That'll be there when you get back, I promise. Swimming, wonderful. Non-weight bearing for people who have joint pain. We do have the resistance of the water and we can keep, uh, keep our body active. It does get your heart rate up, which is fantastic. Tai Chi is wonderful. Absolutely fantastic for energy movement. And trust me, if anyone's ever taken a Tai Chi class where it's a true Tai Chi class, you will get one heck of a workout, I promise.
traumas. So, adequate sleep. So the melatonin helps with this, and research does show that the human body needs eight plus hours of sleep per night to function normally. We're talking about brain function, talking about immune system function, cardiovascular, and just letting your body go through its normal cycles because there are timed cycles, believe it or not, we are all affected by the movement of the moon and different things like that, and we're all on a cyclical pattern. And with that, if we're getting the right amount of sleep, we let those cycles happen from the cascade of chemistry that happens in the body. Like uh, the reason that the, uh, the transportation industry said no, that truck drivers shouldn't be driving all night anymore is because 2 a.m. is usually when our cortisol levels crash and our cognitive abilities drop. So when those drop and they're at their lowest, lowest level at 2 a.m., that's where most truck drivers were having car crashes. So they said, nope, you've got to park your truck and you've got to sleep because we have to let you go through this. Otherwise, you're going to go off the road and you're going to harm yourself or other people. So what is lack of sleep associated with? It's associated with decreased immune response. Um, it's also just decreased with increased stress. People who get normal amounts of sleep um, or adequate number amounts of sleep, they live longer. They're, having, they're happier when they're at work. They deal with stress better. So if you are in a stressful situation, you want to be the person who has your wits about you because you've got plenty of sleep. We've all had those nights where we pulled an all-nighter, we didn't sleep, we're not thinking clear, we're not able to adjust to the changing environment because our world changes quick, it changes fast. And if you're not there and you're not ready for it, then you're, you could be left behind. So a lot of different ways to reduce stress. I just put a few of them up here. Laughter is always the best medicine. That's what every doctor is always, you know, that's what all the books say. Um, breathing exercises, believe it or not, we get great gas exchange from the outside air and bring that oxygenation into the blood. Um, just about every disease on the planet does worse, meaning we do healthier when we have high oxygen levels in the body. You guys are down at sea level, which is good. I'm a mile high, which uh, means I have less of that oxygen. So I do things to help bring oxygen into my body. So some of those are anything from hyperbaric chambers, oxygen therapies, um, also making sure that your blood quality is good and high uh, to where you have an increased oxygen carrying capacity. We won't get into the, uh, the biochemistry of what happens with that. We'll just kind of leave it there. Meditation, praying, those are wonderful because it also helps quiet your mind. And when your mind is quiet, you release serotonin, dopamine, all these wonderful feel-good hormones that don't just make you feel good, but they actually make you healthier. So if you do those, you think quicker, you're going to be healthier, and in the long run, you're going to be better off. Writing, uh, spending some time with your pets. Your pets are wonderful. Cats, dogs, fish, I don't care what kind of pet it is. As long as it makes you happy, that's what's going to happen because you're releasing those, uh, those feel-good hormones that make you happier that we were just talking about. Writing a gratitude list is wonderful because this changes your energy. And when you start writing a gratitude list, you start, and this is something I heard since I was a little kid from my mom, Diana, is... If you change the way you focus on things, then the things you're focusing on will change. And if you're coming from gratitude, then all of your things that you've been focusing on will start to brighten up, will start to change, and all those negative things will start to slide to the side because you won't notice those anymore because they're not in your focus as much. And writing things down absolutely focuses your attention a lot more. Affirmations are fantastic. They start to rewrite this record that we all have playing in our head we start to scratch over the bad parts and we start to play the really good parts again. Puzzles and games, upbeat music, coloring and journaling, these are all good distraction things that help us to stay focused, to help us when we do need to focus, we don't have as much stress in our body and we're there and able to get rocking and rolling. So different treatments to help your immune system. Anything, I mean, holistically, this is, this is my field here now. So acupuncture, massage therapy, chiropractic, physical therapy, IV therapy, and stem cell therapy. And you're sitting there going, okay, um, and I'll go through these, but you're sitting there going, okay, how's, uh, how's stem cell therapy fly into this? And there's actually some very, very interesting research that's coming out that they're doing in China and other places where they're seeing the stem cell therapy not only boost people's immune system, but remember that inflammation that happens down deep in the lungs where we have those alveolar sacs, when those are damaged, they build scar tissue. And scar tissue is really tough and rigid, um, kind of like a gristly part of the steak that's really tough and hard. That you don't want in, in a, flex, a tissue that you need to be really fluid and flexible. If it's really hard and rigid, you don't have gas exchange and you don't have much movement, 
and that can cause problems later. So with the stem cell therapy, they're seeing that it improved their immune system and it started to remodel and get rid of a lot of the or a lot of the scar tissue down deep in this patient's lungs who had suffered from that really bad ARDS or that inflammation down deep inside. So let's move on to some of these therapies here. So melatonin we spoke about. Melatonin is a wonderful sleep aid. It also stops that NLRP3 cascade. Nitric oxide also has a wonderful vasodilatory effect, uh, opens up our blood vessels, and it also helps create that nitric oxide viruses and bacteria can't live very well in that environment. So if we have high oxygen and high nitric oxide, um, the uh, bacteria, the viruses, parasites, those pathogens can't live in those environments very well. Nitric oxide also in high doses has actually been shown to be a wonderful anti-cancer because it revs our immune system up and cancer cells can't live very well in that environment either. Zinc, elderberry, vitamins, they're listed there. A all the way through B12 are fantastic because those vitamins found in a lot of fruits and vegetables are necessary for the chemical cascade to move your immune system along, to get that engine revved up. Our cars run on gasoline. Our immune system runs on good nutrients, high, you know, good vitamins, and they're all found in these things here. Okay, a good probiotic, that actually builds up a good defense uh, inside of our gut. So if we eat something that has a pathogen on it, having a good defense or a digestive system that will kill and get rid of that bacteria, virus, or pathogen of one, or, or, you know, one kind or another, that's where we want to get rid of it so that we don't absorb it through our intestinal tract. Now, stinging nettle tea, this is very, very interesting because stinging nettle tea has been shown to work really, really well with melatonin to get rid of all that inflammation down inside the lungs. And it also helps um, our body from letting the virus in. It. So it's a, good, uh, it's a good gatekeeper. And if, if it's in there, then it's also a good thing for our immune system to help. So these are specific things for COVID-19 that are coming out in the literature that not only like, hey, I've got a guess, I've got an idea, I've got a suggestion, but these are things that they're working with patients currently and they're getting some good, uh, decent results about it. So, what about these IV therapies, right? So when we look at our IV therapies, I've got to pull something up here, a few seconds. So when we look at like our Myers cocktails, Myers cocktail is, a, is an IV cocktail that is loaded with lots of vitamins, nutrients, and B vitamins. So this is a really good way to get a high, high dose really, really quickly of all of these nutrients into the bloodstream like really fast. In the matter of uh, about an hour, we can flood the system and really rev up your immune system. Now, chelation therapy. Chelation therapy is the next one on the list here, and it's very, very good for uh, grabbing a hold of heavy metals, grabbing a hold of things that we want to grab a hold of. That's what chelation means. Chelation means to link. So if we go ahead and put chelate, a chelation therapy in, in place and we chelate you, then we're basically putting things into your system such as um, ozone, um, I'm so sorry, not ozone, um, uh, uh, hydrogen peroxide, or O2, uh, H2O2. And that is a chelating agent because it will grab a hold of things. And then that being held onto, your body says, oh, let's get rid of that. That's, uh, that's easy to get rid of that. It's able to mark it, grab it, identify it, hold onto it, and get it out of your system. That's what chelation is all about. Now, our, oxyg uh, our oxidative or ozone therapy, this is really, really good. It has multiple effects, right? So our ozone therapy stimulates production of white blood cells in our immune system. It, uh, it, it, will, it will directly kill viruses and bacteria. And so that's what, uh, one of the main things that it does. Is it not only revs your immune system, adds to your immune system, but it's one of these guys that's going to combat and go shoulder to shoulder with your white blood cells to get in and knock these guys out of there. Glutathione is a wonderful additive that we add into high-dose vitamin C uh, or Myers cocktails that basically is a wonderful antioxidant, one of the best out there, and we can put it in high dose straight into the IV, or you can actually do some glutathione through oral. You can go purchase this at the store and uh, swallow that. It builds up in your immune system. It's a wonderful antioxidant. High dose vitamin C is wonderful from the standpoint that it um, really actually helps oxygenate your body, and believe it or not, it alkalinizes you a little bit. Everybody, oh, I misspelled vitamin, didn't I? Um, Sorry about that. <laughs> so vitamin C, it, you'd think vitamin C, oranges are kind of acidic, like lemons, different things like that. But believe it or not, when it comes inside of our body, it becomes alkalinizing and it helps to lower that inflammation, lower that um, acidity in our body, 
and it does rev our immune system up quite a bit. We can take um, oral vitamin C, which is great, but once you get above 3,000 milligrams or three grams of vitamin C, it starts to affect our digestive system and we can start to get a, loose, a little bit of loose stool or diarrhea, which can be dehydrated. But with an IV, we can do 25, 35, 50, 100 uh, grams at a time, and it doesn't have that effect because we bypass the digestive system and we can really ramp up the system by that. Uh, I'm going to check in with you guys. I've been going pretty quick. How are we all doing? You doing well? Awesome. Doing good? Awesome. Lots of questions are coming in. So, but yeah. Yep, we're yep. we're going we're gonna to get to those. I just want to be able to do this part here. Great. So, I do have some immune kits if you guys want them. We can orchestrate that. It does have some adrenal support, some sleep aid stuff, um, and uh, it also does have an N95 mask in it. Talking about masks, so you see uh, like surgeons wearing these guys. These little masks here, they have a little metal thing that will wrap around and hold on to your nose and kind of close that. These guys here that you can get, they're more stopping things from leaving you and going to other people. They don't really get in and, and stop things from coming into you so much. An N95 mask or better actually does have such a tight area that particles and viruses and stuff can't get through like a filter and stops it from coming in as well as going out. But N95 masks for a limited supply. Um, you can find them sometimes at uh, Home Depot, Love's. you can order them on Amazon. Um, doctor's offices and hospitals, frontline first responders, those guys kind of need those right now. So I've been sticking with this because I haven't really been exposed too much to anything, but I'm trying to protect other people from me in case I have it. So that's why I wear this little guy when I go out. Um, and if you guys do want to do any one-on-one -on -one counseling, you can uh, make up some, uh, you can call this number right here to make an appointment. I'd be happy to talk with you one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, do have some CBD and different supplements available that can be drop shipped straight to you. And if you do have any questions, like this email address down here, it's healthrestorationcolorado at gmail.com. That comes to me, myself and my staff and other providers will be happy to get answers back to you about different things going on uh, with you personally. I don't want to go through any questions about anything personal with anybody here, because that would be a violation of HIPAA. And HIPAA is a law that I have to respect your privacy and I don't want to talk about um, anything personal at this moment with anything else, okay? Again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for the investment in yourself and uh, wanting to get this information to help you and your family members. I, I, I hope that you will spread this information and tell other people that it's a bad virus, protect yourself, but also boost your own immune system up the best way you can, because that's the best thing that we can all do. Because if everybody did it, we'd knock this virus out in no time. It would run its course and we wouldn't have to stay at home. Um, so we do have to protect the people that just don't quite have that immune system up and going. So I'm going to uh, wrap things up here, get back to my screen where I can see your questions, and we'll be able to go through those. We do have lots of questions. Oh, I can. Okay. Ashley, do you want to... Uh... I'm Shane. So um, first, with melatonin or any of the others, should we be taking those prophylactically? Yes. That's a good thing. Take it at night because it will make you sleepy. Okay. Now, with melatonin, people say, how much? You know, what's a good dose for me? Everyone is different. So with that, the way that you'll want to do is start off slow and you want to be sleeping and waking up refreshed. If you start waking up and you're really groggy, that's been nicknamed a melatonin hangover. You're taking a little too much. So that's where we should be able to wake up or sleep well, wake up rested and not be groggy in the morning. Okay. How about any certain foods that would help keep your blood sugar stable or lower your uh, blood sugar? Green leafy vegetables um, and fruits are good. So the sugars that are in fruits are really all that we technically need. Um, so think of, I like a caveman diet. So a paleo kind of diet. So if you think of, what did a caveman or cave woman have available to them? They didn't have processed sugar, they didn't have white flour, they didn't have those things. So the more we think about our bodies and these machines, these vehicles that we get to walk around in, we have to treat them like they were designed. I mean, food has, and the processing and cooking and different things has evolved much faster than our bodies have. So let's stick with and put into our bodies the things that they had available to them back when we were cave people. That's a good way to think about it. Go ahead, next one. Um, what strength of CBD oil? I like to start, they come in different strengths, you know, 250, 500, 1000. I like to start with 500 and then with a dropper, 
we look at them, divide that in four, start with a quarter, uh, quarter of a dropper morning and evening, and then you can up it from there. So if you have a pain condition or something that you're trying, like a, let's say you've got a bum knee and you really want to try to help that, you'll start there and let it build up in your system over the next couple of weeks, and then you can start to up the dose from there. Okay. Uh, and then I, I'm just going to answer Deborah. Um, yeah, she said, if we're in our home and we're washing our hands, can we touch our faces? Well, I, I have not been able to break myself of that yet. Right. Wearing a mask helps a little. <laughs> yes. So yeah, if you're washing your hands and you're at home and you're not in contact with anybody else, then you're usually going to be just fine. Um, it's more along the lines, if you have been out, let's say you go to the grocery store and you, you're touching things on the shelf and you don't know who else is touching, you put them in your cart, you're also holding onto that handle, pushing that buggy around, that's when you're really going to wash, want to wash your hands. Now, some people go as far as putting on some gloves. That's not a bad idea. However, gloves, if you touch something and then touch your eye with the glove, it's just the same as your skin. So wash your hands, put on your gloves when you go outside to the store. If you want to be really, uh, really good about it, really put that barrier out there. Just make sure and peel your gloves off before you touch your face. Okay. Um, uh, Debbie heard that there's a few simple exercises to produce nitric oxide naturally. Is that true? There are different, actually any exercise is going to produce a lot of different things in the body. Nitric oxide being one of them. We supplement with nitric oxide because we want to kind of kickstart and boost that whole system and that cascade going down. So that's where the supplementation comes in. Okay. Um, then Val shared her elderberry syrup recipe. Thank you for that. Okay. Um, always confused about the choice of a probiotic. Um, you want something that is, uh, so people say, okay, well, it's in yogurt. I have lots of stuff in yogurt. True but did they add fruit or did they add sugar? Because if you have a cell that is this little probiotic guy, right? And you think of this as like a water-filled sack. Sugar or fruit, or even the sugars in fruit, will actually have an osmotic effect and it will crenate or dry out that cell. And then the probiotic you're eating is not uh, as effective for you. And it tastes good, but it's not as effective. So plain yogurt's what I recommend. A good probiotic, make sure that you have one to two million counts per dose um, of each one of the little probiotic guys that they'll list on the side, meaning the numbers are really high if you're taking an oral dose, like a capsule or something like that. Okay. How much stinging nettle tea or are the capsules good? Capsules are great or just kind of drink the tea throughout the day. It's not about getting a dose in. It's just about building up good, healthy things in the body. This is a marathon, not a sprint. So it's just little bits at a time build up in the body and our body, believe it or not, will, uh, will utilize this stuff and it will pack it away in a, in a little storage area um, for later use. Okay, can you get too much probiotic? Not really, I mean, you'd really have to go to town on it. If you start to get some loose stool or some diarrhea, then I back off. <laughs> Probably a good indicator. Yep, your body uh, will tell you. Yeah, uh, and I'm just going to read this because it's cool. Absolutely proud of my son. I'm so blessed when I can call and ask him questions all the time and get treated with stem cells or whatever I need. He is amazing. Hmm, who said that? <laughs> um, and Kristen asks, what does your kit contain? Will it provide the immune system boost? Uh, uh, yeah. It does. Um, it does produce the boost because we're going to support the adrenals. Because one of the things that I'm finding the most with all my patients is they're stressed out. Yeah. So, I mean, who here works two, three hours a day and then rests and relaxes the rest of the day? Raise your hand. <laughs> none of us, none of us do. So 10 hour days, 12 hour days, 14 hour days, high stress, go, go, got a hundred emails. Oh wait, there's a hundred more. Got phone calls to make. Oh man, I missed that appointment. I screwed that. Okay, now I gotta go show property. I got this listing, gotta post these, Am I kind of reflecting your lives back to you, right? Those high stresses, that's why I have an adrenal booster in there because uh, boosting the adrenals, believe it or not, lowers our cortisol levels and cortisol is our biggest combatter of just about everything going on in the body. Any, if you ask any immunologist, any doctor, anything like that, what's the main thing you see linked with every disease on the planet? And it's that word stress. So stress, really is a big cause of everything. So our adrenal glands are, that's our organ of stress. That's our gland of stress, if you will. And it's only designed to be stimulated every once in a great, great while. 
because it produces hormone that makes us fight like crazy or run like hell. And so that's our fight or flight system. And it's only supposed to come out when we saw that saber tooth tiger or we, you know, whatever was lurking behind the bush, we could run like crazy or defend ourselves. Not every single day, day after day, seven days a week, 25 hours a day, 385 you know, days a year. So I'm exaggerating the numbers, so you get my point. Yeah, we, we're living it. Um, let's see. Is there any immunity boost with ginger? And then I thought about turmeric. Would that be something good to start supplementing with? Both of those are wonderful anti-inflammatory. So yes, absolutely. So ginger um, is great for inflammation. It does have a little effect on the immune system as the, just from the standpoint that our body's not combating something else. It's not combating that inflammation. Turmeric and ginger work very similarly, but on different channels to keep the inflammation down. And so if you're doing that, um, you take ginger via capsule, you can drink ginger tea. You can, I have also had patients where they take a, like a potato peeler and they shave an actual organic ginger from the store and they boil it to where the water as it boils down, they strain off that, that water and they've made a tincture and you can drink that. And that's a wonderful anti-inflammatory. It's a really good idea. And then um, Brian Garrity had some questions, but I really want to respect what you had said as far as HIPAA goes. So Brian, if you wouldn't mind, I'll send you his email address. He did have it up there. Um, go ahead and just email him directly because that does start getting into your personal uh, Parkinson stuff. Any other questions for Shane? Well, I just shot my email. Oh, you did it. Thank it you. said, what does the kit contain? Did you go through that? The kit contains some adrenal support and a sleep aid because those are some of the two, you know, fundamental building blocks or foundation for the immune system on things you can do for yourself. Because everybody can go buy some vitamin C, you can buy some glutathione, or you can buy all of these different things you want to supplement with. But those are the basics. So I wanted to, you know, keep it out of your lungs and away from your face with a mask. I wanted to support your adrenals and I wanted to sleep aid. So that's what the kit contains. There are other things we can get in, that, in there for you if you'd like, but that's the basics. Awesome. And I would encourage anybody who's shared all of his information, reach out. Um, I love that you take a holistic approach and yet still have a, a tremendous impact. You've helped me with my adrenals in the past. Thank goodness I started building those up before this hit because they're certainly getting stressed now. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, uh, you are a gift. So thank you. Thank you for coming on much. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? You can email them to me. Um, thank you guys very much for having me. I'm looking at it just, uh, this was awesome. Thank you. <laughs> yes. I appreciate it. Oh my gosh. I'm getting all these. This Logan. Thank you, Shane. Logan's fantastic. He's sitting right behind me, actually. Parker's right behind me. Right. Absolutely. Well, I wish you all health. I wish you all a lot of success. Um, we're all going to get through this. It is temporary. It just kind of sucks right now. So just hang in there. One last question I had written down earlier. So the, the herd immunity thing, how long do you think that's going to take? Because um, that, that really will be when we don't have to worry about this anymore, right? Well, any, anything can rev back up at any time. And viruses can mutate. So with a herd immunity, that's, more, that's kind of an uh, immunology term that comes around with uh, immunization. So that's why we all got measles shot and stuff like that. So we all did our MMR and different things to build up our immune system against it so that if it ever had an outbreak, then we would, we wouldn't, it wouldn't just run rampant through society. Um, that's where vaccines kind of come in with that. And depending upon your, uh, your philosophy and what you want to put into your body and what you don't, I recommend that you do some research on your own on those. Mm -hmm. um, but I think what you might be asking is, what's going to happen with, uh, you know, as we all start to get through this and we all build our immune systems up to different things, when is this virus going to be combated? Is that kind of what you're kind of getting at? Or, or controlled or, or like the seasonal flu where we, we, you know, don't go into a two, three month quarantine. It's all, it's already running its cycle. So we did see, you know, the numbers start to ramp up and they've peaked and they're starting here in Colorado, especially they're starting to flatten out. Um, and starting to starting to drop. They actually this week opened things back up to where not full opening opening up, but we can do elective procedures again. We can get patients in here other than people who are loss of life, limb, joint, um, organ, or they're going to continue to get worse. So they're starting to open things up because those numbers are coming down, and it's just about letting the virus run its course. And it's it's kind of running its course now. 
Okay. And then what I like to do, ending these, since it was such a gift to us for you to come on, what can we do for you? How can we help you, Shane? Tell, tell other people. Tell other people about it. If you want to donate anything, I will make sure and, and pass that along and we can maybe get people in who can't afford some care, anything like that. I'd be happy to do something like that. Um, if you want to set up, we can set up a little account if something wants to be donated into that. I will gladly pass that along because I do have patients who they can't, they, they have some weakened immune systems. Uh, they come in on little you know, oxygen generators, stuff like that. I would love to get these people onto some different IV therapies, do different things with them. Um, so if we build up an account, I can take some of those patients and apply that directly, shove all that over to help them. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, sir. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank you all very, very much for having me. I appreciate it. I love being able to person. Thank you. All right. Have a great Tuesday, everyone. You too. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much.